¿Hasta dónde llega rayado? Oh my days, here we go, my big break. I'm on TV, my parents are watching at home, they'll finally like me. Okay, just be calm and answer the question. <laughs> okay, don't, don't worry, this guy's interrupted, just go after him. <laughs> Yeah, so obviously I was on TV. Shut up, Javier. Yo guys, it is your boy Niren here and you are watching FTW. It's of course the series where I bring to you the best and more frequently the worst of what football has to offer during the last seven days. What's been kicking off in the world this week? Well, the UK was once again paying its tributes and respects as the Queen's funeral was held in London. It was a bank holiday off and millions of people queued for over 12 hours to see her in her final state. At the funeral though, and it was an interesting formation for holding her here, a full 3-3 sort of shape, including the Royals' very own 12 million pounds fee man. Strange that he's already with their under 18s though. I was half expecting serious tactical analysis here. I never, th I bet I never thought you'd be interviewed by me. I just knew that this kid was destined for football management. But I've got to say the ratings for this side were not too great. Prince Harry felt a serious sense of urgency when he needed to be up for a corner. Though he was slightly frustrated when he wasn't allowed to go up top here. It pisses me off. Ginger people do have souls, all right? Anyway, on to the football, and we're officially into an international break now. But Manchester City go into it off the back of yet another simple victory with a 3-0 win over Wolves. The headband Huang Hee Chan opened the scoring almost immediately, and this one unraveled for Wolves pretty quickly as Erling Haaland added another. Congratulations, Erling. I hope the golden boot makes you very happy. The guy's actually a cheat code in front of goal. It's like he's playing a video game. He's already got half of his tally in last season's Bundesliga, and we're in September. Maybe be weird to farmers after all. City youngster Cole Palmer's gonna be devastated realizing he's not starting for them in the next 14 years. Erling didn't take kindly to being defended against though in this one and at half time was not too happy with the cameraman. Haaland punching a camera. This is a technology v technology civil war. I don't know how to describe it but he definitely set fire to ants when he was a kid. He's violent for no reason all the time. Speaking of unnecessary violence. <laughs> Yet Nathan Collins then found himself getting a straight red for this challenge on Jack Grealish. Jack was not looking too great afterwards. These are black belt shenanigans. There has to be a backstory to this. He slapped him 8-0 on FIFA last week or something. You know when it's just a truly unnecessary foul? This is basically an off the ball incident he's so late. Bad day at the office for Nathan, though at least he knows his future daughter's gonna be able to defend herself well. Diego Costa's only been at Wolves for like one week and now look, here he is getting involved as Jack Grealish tries to regain feeling in his hip getting up. But yeah, a simple one for Man City. They're just making certain games look easy. Another team cruising to victory was Tottenham after they thrashed Leicester 6-2 at home. It started well for the Foxes but ended in yet more huge disappointment. Hung Min Son turned out to be the misery compiler, coming off the bench to score a 15-minute hat-trick. He spoke very directly and passionately to the three fantasy football players that have had the patience to keep him in their squad. I'm made for this game and anybody who wants it can have it. People underestimate me. Academy coach Yaya Torre saw him at Tottenham's training ground and was one of the first to congratulate him. Hey Jim, they join, they, they doing the work, they doing and they force what they... Leicester actually finished though. Their set piece coach must be traumatized watching them in training because they are absolutely useless from them. These lot have got a worse Fox conversion rate than Dora the Explorers. Oh man. There was a fan in the crowd who'd fallen asleep, he'd had enough, and he was still more awake than their defence from corners. The thing is, they've got a centre-back with two syllables in his name, and we still can't pronounce it. So you know the fuck. Wilfred and Didi's reapplying just to go back to uni. Rebecca Vardy's working out how she can use Leicester's future parachute payments to pay off her court proceedings. But you know the main problem? Their goalkeeper. In fact, here's their goalkeeping coach watching Danny Ward from the crowd. This guy's finito. I mean, he was never started, but he's finito. Early Haaland versus him is going to be absolutely mental, mate. Get in there. Danny Ward, he sounds like a striker in the Vanarama National League or an extra bartender in EastEnders. Leicester's transfer team are going to be impressed when he only concedes five in a game. Get the contract out, put it on the table, 
Yeah. Let him sign it. Let him write whatever numbers he wants to put on there. I can't lie. These guys might be done. Brendan Rodgers is the favourite to get the sack next. The thing is, he's only five foot three, so he can't be commanding any sort of respect in the dressing room. And elsewhere in North London, Arsenal took a solid 3-0 victory over Brentford. Granit Xhaka went into this one as captain and didn't cause a diplomatic incident, which is good. He was resisting the urge to fly kick an Arsenal fan that got under his skin. Gabriel Jesus got a goal again. He's going to rewrite history at this point. Martin Odegaard's going to be fuming, lying in the physio room, having not been healed by Jesus once in his spare time. Fuck's sake, you've helped the poor for four times this week already. What about me for a change? Fabio Vieira grabbed his first for the club on his debut. Ian Wright was flabbergasted in the BBC studio, seeing a Vieira on the score sheet. I can't believe it. Someone said he was dead. But Fabio was very honest about his strike in his interview after the game. It was a spectacular goal yeah. for your first game. I'm going to tell him, well, lucky. <laughs> lucky. No, no, don't say that. No. <laughs> Gabriel tweeted at full time after this one, saying it was a lovely kickabout in the park to get back at Ivan Tony for his tweet last season. Ivan and his mates won't be happy catching him in the tunnel after that. Meanwhile, Thomas Frank's team talk for next year is already sorted. The big story here, though, was the youngest ever Premier League player, as Ethan Unwineri came on late in this one, aged 15. He did struggle to adapt to first team training a little bit at first. I need you to dribble through the corns, yeah? Alright, cool, cool. Boski. He's going to be on top of the world walking into RE tomorrow. The guy can't buy paracetamol, but he's played for Arsenal. He could be lawfully removed from Tesco when buying Red Bull. Has he even done bronze DV yet? He's not going to be taking shit from anyone when a prefect tells him he's got extra maths at 2.45pm. Got the news carrying on like a total I don't mark. give a f I didn't do sh He's younger than the Emirates Stadium, for God's sake. Unbelievable day for the guy, though. So happy for him. I'm sure we'll see a lot more of him soon. Marcus Rashford will be devastated knowing that he's missing out on his GCSEs, though. The children. Okay, How are the children? His PE teacher will be going into work on top of the world, even though he's only taught him hockey all year. I am Jose Mourinho. But once again, another good result for Arsenal, and they stay top of the league. We have got to take into account the opposition they've played, though, and they still need to win in a real test this season. Manchester United were back in action in the Europa League this week and they took a simple 2-0 win over Sheriff Tiraspol. Obviously, Sheriff completed a fairy tale win against Real Madrid last season, but United were always strong favourites. Cristiano Ronaldo brought out his signature Sue in front of shop assistants. Here he is getting escorted out of PSG's negotiation room after putting Rint Stjepan Radulovic on his CV. Jadon Sancho brought out a nice touch with the other goal of the game though. He was given a specialised shin pad made just for him by a young fan this week and his celebration was dedicated to that fan. The one Vietnamese personality has made history this week by gaining several inches in height due to leg surgery and people keep tagging Lisandro Martinez in it for fuck's sake. Eric Ten Hag is having a difficult time convincing him to go out to Vietnam. For me, I can't do it. You can't. I can't lie, I don't think this procedure would change Harry Maguire all that much. Meanwhile, can you imagine Donny van der Beek trying to sit on the bench after getting this surgery done? Darwin Nunez is away on international duty, but he's still going Going viral on Twitter. Yeah, no, this guy might actually be cooked. Get to the stage where I just think he's out of his depth. And you actually feel a little bit sorry for him, really. He should not be playing it at this level. He runs like he's got to plan each step individually. How do you red time a finesse shot in real life? I just, I can't deal with this anymore. It's like Alvaro Morata, but in the form of a foundation paper. Newly promoted sides, Forrest and Fulham faced off with the West Londoners keeping up their solid start to the season. They came back from behind to win here 3-1 with the help of a Reed Pokemon Evolution. Meanwhile, Nottingham Forest are not looking too solid and their players are going to be queuing up to leave if they end up going down in the summer. The whole of Nottingham's going to look like some DFS fire sale. They should have known this was going to happen mate. Nottingham's population's doubled in size. They don't have the infrastructure for that. The Premier League's going to have to take matters into their own hands at the end of the season though when Forest can't sell all 256 of their players. Everton beat a struggling West Ham 1-0 this week and Frank Lampard at full time celebrated by mocking the West Ham fans. Well it's not quite a hammering am I right? <laughs> no, no but seriously Seriously. One journalist got a little bit too friendly with David Moyes for the Scotsman's liking. Uh, Moyes, how was your reception? Uh, Moyesy. 
<laughs> yeah. Okay, I don't think we're that close. <laughs> Meanwhile, after the game, and Alex Iwobi as well as some of his Everton teammates posted this video from the changing rooms. Graham Souness is going to have a field day going into that room if he sees this. Where's Paul? At least West Ham fans got free drinks gifted to them by the Danes in the form of Silkeborg in the Europa League. Why is everyone getting free alcohol but me? One youngster posed as a Chelsea fan when meeting Didier Drogba this week and got his shirt signed only to reveal his true allegiances. <laughs> oh my god. Back at Man United and Bruno Fernandes was getting asked about fans' perception of him and how he argues with referees. He spoke about how Wilfred Zaha gets away with it and how Nicolas Pepe used to get away with a lot as well. Poor Pepe, man, getting dragged into this whilst he's chilling out in France. I'm like, what do you say fuck me for? Artemelo made his debut for Liverpool in our under-23s against Rochdale. This was to gain fitness. The Brazilian's been out for a little while and he was replaced by Jay Spearing. I cannot believe that is a sentence that exists. At Leeds and they made an approach for Cody Gakpo, the promising youngster over at Eredivisie. PSV confirmed they didn't take Leeds' bid seriously because apparently they included clauses that were based on them getting into the Champions League. Right, we'll give you an extra million if we get in the Champions League. Not happening, but fairs. If we win the World Cup. Okay, I don't know about. If we finish at least in the top three of the Grand National. Meanwhile, David Beckham refused preferential treatment to wait in the queue to see the Queen laid to rest for 13 hours whilst other celebrities like Philip Schofield and Hollywood Willoughby were given fast tracks ahead of the public. Not the only time that Phil Schofield's crossed the line that he shouldn't have. Now, in Spain, we had the Madrid derby, where Real Madrid kept up their unreal start to the season, edging out Diego Simeone's Atletico. There was controversy going into this one after racist remarks from a Spanish agent about Vinicius Jr.'s dancing celebrations. Vinicius came out with a statement on Insta saying he was going to continue celebrating how he liked. Atleti midfielder Koke gave an interview on the topic, which didn't help, though that wasn't his intention. But Vinny would get his revenge. Rodrigo! Rodrigo finishes and Real Madrid take the lead completely against the run of play. 18 minutes up and it's Atletico Madrid now. Neil Real Madrid won. There's the dance. Koke was left to watch on depressed as Vinicius and Rodrigo danced in front of him. Vinny had not a single care in the world as 427 euros in single coins as well as a plastic chair was thrown at him from the crowd. Vamos a parte que eu peço aquele vinho do bar. If I'm Real Madrid, I'm blaring some music outside that agent's house and dancing there too. Meanwhile, an attempt to get Atletico back into the game, Diego Simeone told his players to embrace the spirit of their former striker, Luis Suarez. The reality is we just end up getting this again. Griezmann got rinsed, put in a tackle in this one. He looked like he got put to sleep. Though knowing Atletico, it's going to be less than a 30 minute nap. Jules Koundé was asked on Twitter whether he'd actually received his salary from Barcelona. Barcelona are probably the only club in the world where the players actually have to confirm they've received their paycheck. The Spanish authorities will have to make moves though when Jules calls them in March, confirming he's not been paid for five months. Barca fans fell in love with Ronald Araujo even more after the centre-back jumped over the Barcelona badge to ensure that he didn't step on it. Meanwhile, Gavi, while signing shirts for fans, was moved to by a girl who gave him his phone number and he promptly followed her on Insta. This man's playing on and off the pitch. Spain officially announced their squad for the upcoming international break and did it with this biking video of their manager. Imagine England just did this but got Ben Foster to cycle about in London. Ivan Tony next. Top quality geezer, proper lad. Athletic club pair Inyaki and Nico Williams scored in the same game for the first time in their careers as the pair of brothers did the business for the Basque side. Bill Bauer going to be checking through all the birth records to see if there's any more Williamses from that family. Meanwhile, over at Real Betis, and there's some brilliant rhythm amongst the stewards. Over in France, some Paris Saint Germain took a slender win over Lyon with 1 0 the final score there. The highlight, though, was Alexander Lacazette spinning Sergio Ramos with no voice as well, you know. Killing Mbappe. He's been getting some heat recently for his selfishness and he didn't help himself with this one when another one of his teammates was in acres of space. On top of that, and he's not provided a single assist for his front three teammates. Meanwhile, Leon's manager, after three defeats on the bounce, confirmed that a lot of alcohol would be consumed in the international break. OGC Nice and French centre-back Jean-Claire Toribo managed to get sent off after just nine seconds this week. This is ridiculous. How's the kit man going to see you twice in two minutes? Oof, got my beer, ready to sit down and watch this. Why is there only ten players on the pitch? And Marseille and Matteo 
Leo Gunduzi managed to score in both ends. Meanwhile, in the third division and at Le Poy Foot, goalkeeper Jan Marolo was sent off for dancing on his goal line for a penalty by a referee despite not even doing anything after his original warning. The biggest upset of the week was over in Italy, where Monza grabbed their first Serie A win at the hands of Giants Juventus. So the first disappointing end at Monza we've seen this month. A fairy tale story, though, you've got to say for the minnows. I'd like to write a formal apology to Andrea Pirlo. Juventus are just bad. Meanwhile, over at Roma and Jose Mourinho was sent off for running onto the pitch. His interview after running 1,500 metres to call the referee a prick was somewhat reserved. I prefer really not to, not to speak. If I speak, I am in, in big trouble. Meanwhile, the Bundesliga is shaping up crazily in Germany as Bayern Munich went on their fourth game without a win, losing 1-0 to Augsburg, who took a bit of a dig at the tag of a Farmers League over there. It's a shithousery award for the Fuga starter. Union Berlin are going to be wondering how in God's name they've ended up top of the table. How did you get up there? Meanwhile, one kid ran onto the pitch to get a picture with Sadio Mane at full time and entrusted Thomas Muller with the responsibility. Sadio Mane, more like Devastadio Mane. That though brings us on to our goals of the week and we've got some classics again. We start in the MLS where LA Galaxy's Raheem Edwards scored a scintillating solo strike. Edwards trying to turn the corner, he'll slow it up a bit. Has some support with Grand Seer, puts it on his right, onto his left, has a goal! In Poland and at Rakow, Piazetski scored a beautiful acrobatic goal. Meanwhile, the final one comes from Adam Garmson, who is, at all intents and purposes, an amateur player, was playing in a charity game this week, skipped away from a challenge, and at the most ridiculous of angles, managed to chip the ball into the back of the net. <laughs> Netherlands and Ajax fullback Calvin Bassi was frustrated seeing that he's a silver card on FIFA this year. Bassi silver, bro. <laughs> <laughs> A Porto and there's some team bonding going on on the bench over there. Leave it any longer and there'll be some team bondage going on. Meanwhile, there's the ridiculous story that's come from Turkey this week at Antalya Sport, where Japanese international Shoya Nakajima was making his debut with his family watching on in the crowd. 20 seconds after coming off the bench, he receives a straight red card after a VAR check and his family are sent home less than impressed. Hello all and welcome to the beautiful game. The segment where we take a look at the poetic and brilliant side of the game that we love. We are back by popular demand for yet more glorious beauty. And that concludes the beautiful game. Over in the Netherlands and PEC's Vollers, Bart van Hintem scored a sensational own goal. In the fourth tier of Dutch football, we've got a semi-pro baller slapping a penalty out of the stadium. In Portugal, and maybe we needed this guy in the crowd to fly up and catch it whilst it was flying through the air. Over in Argentina now, and we've got some of the most dramatic refereeing you'll ever see. Do you reckon he gave us a yellow card, mate? Don't make me. In the MLS, and one dad, an Atlanta United fan, has come up with a novel way of keeping his young child entertained while whilst he watches the game. Meanwhile, in Turkey, and Maro Akadi made his debut for Galatasaray this week. Coming off the bench, it looked like he was getting some attention in a very suspect way. Mate, imagine the toxicity this guy's gonna have with a Turkish hairline as well. Wondanara's gonna be divorcing him within 20 minutes. Meanwhile, over in the lower leagues of Serbia, and we've got a referee who missed a vital decision, but decided that his version of VAR would be a fan's recording on his mobile phone in the crowd. He consulted the footage and then changed his mind about the decision. to home and England's World Cup kits for Qatar 2022 have officially been announced and the home one is absolutely horrendous. The shoulders look like a PowerPoint presentation. It looks like a training kit for Slovakia from 2009. In the championship and we've got some of the most calamitous defending you'll see all week from Hull City. Meanwhile over at Hartlepool United and Paul Hartley has been sacked as their manager and now they just have Paul for God's sake. In Ecuador and their physios are ready to spring into action at any time or roll into action. In Paraguay and Brazilian goalkeeper Jean was taking the piss denying an opponent here. 
Almeida. In Brazil, Flamengo and Fluminense came up against each other. The red card was dished out, and my man here was very intent to show it wasn't for him. And it's not really surprising because the red card record in this fixture over the last three games is truly appalling. In Vietnam, now we've got a shambles of a goalkeeping howler. I don't even know what the guy was going for, but the control was lacking. We were over at Corinthians' women's side. I'm gonna get demonetized again, boys. Over in Bulgaria, and one of the weirdest goals of their season has taken place between Slavia, Sofia, and Baroy as a ball across the box was put in and it found its way all the way into the back of the net. Meanwhile, over in Ghana, and for Asante Kotoko, during a penalty shootout, this Kotoko player was doing his best to hype up the fans and give him all the support he needed to score. Only to let them down. Now there is time for the moment you've all been waiting for because over in Romania, and we've got two more stories for you again this week. And they both involve Cluj, where first of all, CFR Cluj had to loan kits to Sivaspor after the Turkish side were affected by travel delays and weren't able to get all their equipment and kit to the game. Meanwhile, Dutch defender Timo Lecher thought he'd agree to sign for CFR Cluj in the Romanian league. However, it turns out he got the wrong club and instead had agreed to sign for U Cluj and so had to cancel the transfer because he didn't want to go there. In Bolivia and referee Carlos Garcia want a little bit of space away from this Independiente Petrolero player. In Paraguay again and this fan's not having a great time. Over in Ecuador and we've got someone being proposed to in the crowd there featuring this extremely shocked woman in the back. What's the first thing you need as a referee to be able to kick off a football match? A lack of understanding for VAR? No, not that one. The football ideally. So it's not ideal with this guy in Brazil forgetting about it. Bola nesse primeiro tempo. A pito o árbitro. Ué, cadê o... Teve nem um, um minuto Meu aqui. O que aconteceu que eu não entendi nada ali, velho? Ah, não acredito. We've got some sensational looking street skills going on here at a crossing until you realize that someone's just holding the ball behind a black box instead. <laughs> In Costa Rica, and we've got a sensational mascot race going on here, and I simply need to see this for all the EFL mascots as well. There was a strange reason why Marcos Rojo lost the captain's armband over at Boca Juniors. The Argentine side strip you of it for a month if you get sent off, and that's what happened in their game against Vira Play. In Azerbaijan, and we've got yet another sensational goalkeeping howler here. <laughs> At Al Hilal, and we've got a Brazilian forward doing everything that he needs to do to be able to score, including going round the goalkeeper, then puts it wide. Over in Belarus, we've got some serious pinball leading to a dramatic own goal. In Indonesia, yep, you heard it correctly, they've done it again. In the second division, and we've got a player being stretched off, only to be miraculously healed as he exited the field of play. That's all I was wanting, Gabriel. And in Mexico, how about this for top quality football between Atlas and Monterrey? Todavía el Atlas quiere hacer un golecito, no bueno, no bueno, no bueno, no bueno, no que bárbaro. Now that it's time for still nil nil and you guys know the score by now. This is the segment of the show where I bring to you the best of Sunday League and amateur football. And this time we've got a strike that defies the laws of physics. A ball played into the area, set up on a plate. And, <clears throat> and uh, next question. On to the weird stuff though now. In Brazil and Flamengo's women's side won 34 nil, a tightly contested one. We're in Indonesia again for crying out loud. At Persip Bandung, uh, one fan of their club took to their YouTube comment section to tell Chiro Alves that he should dye his hair silver. Probably not expecting him to see or anything of the like. Well, he turned up at the next game with some silver locks. So who said celebrities don't see everything? Over in India and their league champions were hacked on Twitter and briefly turn into a page attempting to sell pyramid schemes. But finally, over in Egypt, Ismaili SC hired Helder Christabel to become their new manager this week. Except it didn't really last long because an hour and a half later, they sacked their boss after their fans reacted negatively to the club's announcement online. Really makes you wonder how Steve Bruce ever managed to hold down a job longer than two hours. But that is going to wrap up football this week and I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, then feel free to slap a like on the video and of course subscribe if you're new to the channel. You can also follow me on social social media it is at the official fng on twitter and on insta but it's been a pleasure ranting at you guys today have a wonderful day enjoy yourselves and goodbye